As a collector, it's pretty common to find yourself eagerly anticipating your next purchase. But sometimes, no matter how good it looked when you first heard about it, when you finally have it, it just doesn't fit. In times like these, you really have to take it in stride. Don't let it get the best of you. Handle it with dignity and move on with your life. That's kind of how I feel about Star Wars Transformers. They sound like the ultimate fanboy creation, something I'm sure a lot of fans always wondered about and even hoped for. But in execution, it hasn't gone well. Case in point, Luke Skywalker, one of the greatest Jedi in the galaxy, hero of the Rebellion, reduced to this. Luke's signature vehicle is the X-Wing, so it was a logical pick for the first wave of the series. Hasbro's made these things enough times, so by now they have the vehicle down to a science, but something about this one's a little squat compared to their usual proportions. The painting's pretty good. The main decals are chipped intentionally around the edges, and a few gray paint apps are over the red decals on the wings to give it a worn look. It's appropriate. Rebel Alliance vehicles had a long, hard life. Fixing up paint was a low priority. There's some paint fading on the nose, as well as some heat burns around the engines, both indicators of how fast this vehicle goes. Nice touches. Even R2 is well done on top. There's also some nice metal paint on the back and on the top. For accessories, you get the pilot, which is the smartest feature they included in this line. Because the robot mode isn't supposed to be the character, it's a mech. Which begs the question, why will they take the time to make the mechs look like themselves? And anyway, for said mech mode, you get the prerequisite lightsaber. You also get a grand total of four missile launchers, all of which are fired by pressing them in from behind. Hang on. I swear I am not exaggerating this. You gotta be kidding me! This is a pressure launch missile, meaning it's held in place by a plastic claw. When you push it out of the claw, the hard plastic squeezes down, and with that ball shape in the middle of the missile, that squeeze is what launches the missile once it's been pressed far enough. If you push that hard, it should have flown fast enough to knock over my Unicron statue. Now Hasbro has been using these as an inexpensive alternative to spring launchers since Generation 2. By now I would think they would have it perfected. That's not the only problem with this vehicle. As you can see, these wings don't close all the way. But it is an X-Wing. It's supposed to have X-shaped wings. Unfortunately, there's so many hinges on it, it's hard to get them in position right away. And they don't quite look right, unless you get them exactly. And even then, you can see the robot arms on the undersides. Transformation's basic enough, it's mostly moving panels out of the way. But in the transformation, you find all the problems in the mech mode right away. No, that's not me trying to pose him in a goofy way. That's the only pose I can stick him in where he won't fall over. His ankle joints are very weak, and his heel spurs can't hold any weight at all. That's really bad when you've got that much kibble stuck to your back. The molded detail is alright. That's as close to Luke's flight suit as I could probably get. The problem is the mole's design choices. These shoulders, for instance, don't lock in place so they are always sliding forward. There's also a small little notch here to keep the shoulders from being raised upwards at all. Oh yeah, he's gonna make a great Jedi. And then there's the hips. If mine looks odd compared to most you've seen, it's because they replaced the ball joint and swivel of the original with just a normal hinge. Yes, Hasbro remolded it to remove functionality. Thanks, Hasbro. I always wanted a Luke Skywalker that looked like he had to go to the bathroom. 
He can hold the lightsaber pretty well. And there's the four missile launchers from vehicle mode. You can stick him on the wings, his hands, on the back wings. I'm not going to do it for this review because he'd probably fall over. I know this is a little short, but honestly, this toy's gotten more of my time and attention than it deserves. Better to let it sink in a Dagobah swamp. But thankfully, that's as bad as the Star Wars Transformers line gets. No. That's not true. That's impossible. No. No. I'll credit Hasbro with this. They tried again. This time Luke is a snow speeder. I have to admit, thanks to Shadows of the Empire for the Nintendo 64, I'm a sucker for this vehicle. They did a pretty good job recreating it here. Very sleek. Like the X-Wing, the paint deco, is a little scuffed all around. They did a better job on this one though. Rather than chipping it around the edges, they used light gray paint and little bits to make it look a bit more natural. You'll also notice these little burn marks. They appear all over the vehicle. Looks like it came right back from the battle. Very nice touch. Very nice detailing. The molding's right. Everything's accurate right down to the tow line gun in back. And thank you Hasbro for not making it another string launch gimmick. My only real complaint about the vehicle is it never seems to come together as well as it was out of the package. Gaps in the parts are pretty easy to see. For accessories, you get the pilot, of course, which is actually a different mold. Bravo. And you get the lightsaber, which is not a new mold. You also have the two missile launchers, which, amazingly, work! Oh my gosh! Thank you, spring-loaded. Transformation is simple enough because of how they designed it, but unfortunately, that's also my biggest problem with this toy. As you'll see in the mech mode review, there's one huge problem. He's all backpack! What Retrax is to Transformers, the Luke Snowspeeder is to this line. His entire vehicle is strapped to his back. This is my biggest complaint about the design of this line, as they refuse to use the vehicle modes parts to form any parts of the robot mode. That complaint aside, I like the molding in this mode. It's another flight suit, right down to the head, which is a new mold. Bravo on Hasbro's part. They added in this tubing on the sides, as well as on the thighs and a little around the head. That really helps emphasize that this is a mech, not the actual character. They use the cockpit to form the chest, which takes away most of where the detailing was in the movie. It also means the pilot's... yeah. He has to sit in a rather awkward place now. There's not as many articulation points as the other Luke's figure, but they're more effective, as this figure can actually pose itself and actually stand more than one way. The shoulders don't go up on this one either, but they do have some range of motion, so they are at least a little more effective. Again, lightsabers and missile launchers which also have this tubing that's only shown in this mode. I, I also like that as well. Though the lightsaber, really hard to get into his hands for some reason. In the end, if you have to pick one, go for the snow speeder. Yeah, it's all kibble, but his shoulders actually work, and he's capable of more than one pose. Still, for being the biggest hero of the Star Wars saga, there's some irony to the fact that his toys in this line are arguably the worst there are. Hasbro, listen up. You've only got one more chance, and it's called the Land Speeder. It's the last vehicle in the series that Luke is connected to. And how hard can it be? It's a surfboard with three jets on it. I mean, it's not like you haven't done one before. 